Man, it's been a week in politics. Um, of course, we had Sam Uffindle, school bully, and he's a self-admitted school bully, Sam Uffindle, basically rounded on by a paid-off mainstream media and hounded from the National Party caucus, um, sent home to Tauranga under suspension as an inquiry is launched. But having probably been sitting there quite smugly, the Labour Party have now created their own scandal. A backbench MP I've never heard of before. This is probably going to be his greatest moments in politic, moment in politics. He's a doctor, Dr Gaurav Sharma. He's come out and said there's bullying at Parliament. He has gone completely 100% red snowflake, has Gaurav Sharma. Uh, oh, it's a terrible place. If people work under pressure. People can be nasty to each other. Heaven forfend, Mr Sharma. And he, complete, he particularly looks in his own party and at the Labour Whip's office. And, of course, we know, I know from personal experience, that the Prime Minister's office, for example, are real bullies. They practice the bullying by ghosting people and ignoring people, which is what they've done to me for years now and certain other journalists they just don't like. So, of course, there's bullying in the Labour Party. But just to prove it, this morning we've got an ex-Labour MP, Darian Fenton, a unionist. She's come out and bullied Mr Sharma for saying there are bullies in the Labour Party. So it's a perfect storm and Sam Uffindle will be sitting at home in Tauranga breathing a huge sigh of relief at Labour's ability to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. But it seems to me there's a whole lot of millennial hand-wringing going around uh, all around these issues. And someone who I don't think can ever be accused of millennial hand-wringing or snowflakery is former Labor Cabinet Minister, long-time political commentator, former leader of the uh, ACT Party, Richard Preble. Richard, welcome to the programme. Hey, good, good morning. And um, to add to your weather forecast, it's a beautiful day in Lake Rotomar. Oh, very good. Hey, Would you like to know that? Yeah, Prebs, uh, firstly, just in a big overview, I sometimes wonder, as all these accusations about people's behaviour and a backbench MP from Palmerston North, do you think the general public really give a toss about what these rather average politicians are saying, thinking or being quoted on? Uh, probably not. I saw a number of uh, Fox Pop comments from people from Tauranga asked are they concerned um, and almost to a man or woman um, they said no um, and m most people have got a lot more common sense uh, this seems to me to be an example of actually how how not to run a scandal um, I don't know what uh, Christopher Luxton did when he was at university maybe he was at the evangelical club but um I can remember, I'm not going to go through my Mr. Me. Oh, we haven't Mr. got Mr. time. There are the hours in the day, Prebs. No, 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 no. I have enough long for that. But I, I, I can recall various things done by my fellow students that wouldn't, uh, that are considerably worse than what has been described to Mr. Sam Uppendale. And they've gone on to be some of the most distinguished New Zealanders including being high court judges. Uh, it's, it's just total nonsense. But I can say this to you. If I was, when I first stood for Parliament, being measured on what I was like as a pupil or as a student, I would never have passed um, uh, the, the present test. And it, it's just nonsense. Um, it doesn't seem like anyone in the... National Party knows their Shakespeare. Uh, you know, he Henry, was the V, Henry V, yeah. when he was Prince Hal, he was, he was a hellraiser. And then went on to be one of the best um, uh, best kings. Uh, in British um, history, in English history, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah look, I will tell, you, will tell you a story which probably wouldn't pass today's test. Right. When I was first selected for Auckland Central, I was so keen on the Monday, I went out and door knocked. Mm. And I thought, well, I'll go and door knock where I grew up in Simon Street, because that's where I'll get the best support. Mm. And I was knocking on doors in um, the state flats. Yep. 
And I started to say to this uh, pensioner who came to the door, introduced myself, and she said, I know exactly who you are, young man. You are that naughty preble boy. <laughs> and I thought, oh, oh, my God. <laughs> so I then said to her, oh, you do realise that there are five brothers? And she said, yes, I do, and your other brothers were good boys. <laughs> and, <laughs> that wasn't uh, going to work. <laughs> yeah, and, and then she said to me, you're the one that pulled that April Fool's prank that caused us all to have panic attacks. And I had to confess that it was What me. was the joke? Well, I was 10 years old at the time, but under our new thing, no doubt a QC would be set up to investigate this. Yeah. Um, I climbed to the top of the flat block, um, six stories up, uh, went over the balcony, hung on uh, over the six story drop, and then screamed at the top of my voice. Uh, and, uh, doors opened everywhere. People started sawing this little boy, apparently hanging out over a six story drop. And they rushed to get to me, and just as the first person was almost getting to me, my hand slipped off the rail and I dropped to uh, six feet to a hidden, a hidden ledge, um, bounced, bounced up, called out April Fool and ran away. Um, I got into a heap of trouble. Uh, my Quite parents rightly, not bloody, amused. so faking your own death. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> and, um, the um, but I, but but there's a little there's a bit of a twist to the story. Yeah. This is what Sam Avondale should do, because when this lady um, did that and I confessed, I then said to her, "Well, have you considered this, madam? Perhaps Parliament deserves me, and that's where I should be sent." And she gave a wicked grin and said to me. Um, yeah, you've got my vote, uh, Mr. Preble. I almost feel sorry for Mr. Boldu. Oh, <laughs> and, um, very good. <laughs> and that's what Sam Avondale should do. Yeah, but he can't, say, look, has he? Uh, I, look, I, yeah, he's been cut I'm loose by his own leader. To drive yeah. Jacinda from office. Yeah. <laughs> but would um, you agree that Luxon has basically thrown him under the bus because, A, he's oh, yeah, allowed him yeah. to be, to be uh, expelled from court because he's called in some QC... QC why do you call an outsider when you're leader of a party and you're the person in charge? Why do you have to call in some chick lawyer to to be politically correct about an accusation that's just a piece of politics? Well, it's not, but it's it's also what nineteen years before. I mean, there's yeah. a reason why you have a statute of limitations. limitations. Yeah, and I'm not saying that this woman has made up her memories, or Sam Oh, this Avondale. is the flat, mate. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. everybody knows that no one's memory is accurate at that time. What on earth can the QC say? But even if they did say it, so what? He wasn't elected as a student. He was elected now as a, as a, as a man with a family and children who's been a banker, for goodness sake, for the last 15 yeah. years. What he did as a student is... Well, already on what's been said isn't isn't illegal, and it's irrelevant. And if I was the leader of the National Party, I'd have said yes. We've had these allegations allegations made, but that's not what he was elected for, and that's a matter not for me, but for the electors of Tauranga. And they'll get another and crack in a year or bit. Yeah. In one year's time, uh, they'll send a message, <laughs> and and that would have been it. But now this which should have been a one-day wonder, is going to go on for at least two weeks. Mm. And yet I'll make you this prediction. I've never found a QC yet that managed to do an inquiry in two weeks. This could drag on for weeks. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, um, totally ridiculous. Yeah. I, and I'm not defending his behaviour. I'm just saying it's not, it's not relevant. Yeah. And um, the other thing is it appears to me that... Uh, our national leader isn't aware of Scarfies in Otago. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but also <laughs> this has been Scarfies pumped in up. Otago yeah. for years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Prebs, this has also been pumped up and fuelled by a mainstream media inside the Beltway in Wellington that have been clutching desperately at their pearls and screaming outrage. No, that's right. But, but um, 
I wrote an article this week saying this is uh, um, uh, uh, the National Party leader's election to lose, but also pointing out that he just hasn't got enough experience. I mean, he's forgotten the first law of Tammany politics, which is, for my friends, everything, and for my enemies, an inquiry. Yeah. You never hold an inquiry into your own people. Um, yeah. What on earth did he think would come from this inquiry? Uh, how, and how can a QC clear somebody of, of something like this? It's it's just absurd. It's totally um, irrelevant. Yeah. And I say if um, you know Christopher Luxon might be doing the right actions for a corporate, CEO of a New white Zealand, corporate, yeah, but, not, white but corporate. not for a not for a leader of a political party. Yeah. Um, yeah, we all, all. I don't know if you're up, up on the uh, uh, literary um, illusions. So I see that uh, Nicola Willis got her degree in literature. But and are we looking for for Tom Brown schoolboys for School Parliament? Days. Yeah, yeah. Well, the people who come to Parliament are the Harry Flashmans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Those are the guys that end up in in mm. Parliament. <laughs> Mm. Um, Meantime, and, Prince, and, we've and, got and, this. And, we've got this Labor Party backbencher, Gaurav Sharma, who's come uh, out and said, "Oh, Parliament's full of bullies. It's a terrible place. Those whips can be nasty to you. Well, they are called whips, aren't they? Parliamentary services isn't nice to people, <laughs> and I just find it all very difficult." Which well, I thought was one of the most <laughs> naive sort of rants I've ever seen. You volunteer to come to Parliament and you don't then turn up and say, oh, I don't like it. Uh, yep, and I used to be a, uh, a Labour Party whip and um, my nickname then was the policeman and they, uh, <laughs> they say that I'm one of the toughest whips they ever, ha- ever had. And if I was um, under him, you know, if he was under me, I'd have said, listen, buddy, you lied and cheated to get into this place. You told everyone you wanted to be here, and now you're complaining. There are at least ten people better equipped to do the job than you. If you don't like it, you're a list MP. Stuff off. Yeah, he probably wants a QC's inquiry and to do something pretty great. But the great thing about this is now another <laughs> ex-Labour MP's come out and said he should shut up, and she's basically bullying him for accusing the party of bullying people. So... Uh, in a lot of ways for Labor, the advantage <laughs> of the Uffendall scandal has been lost. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, it is, uh, people will say a plague in all their houses. People are yeah. worried about the cost of petrol, worried about groceries. Then They're not worried about what someone did at university or the fact that people speak to one another in Parliament um, rather firmly. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's nonsense. Yeah. Uh, it's a you know it's a complete silly season. Mm. I want to come and back to that to that article you wrote. Probably you said the election is Luxon's to lose. Yep. I'm going to see, suggest to you that after what we've seen this week, he's completely capable of doing that. Oh, of course he is. Um, I still think he's more likely to win, but he's uh, you know it, par- Parliament is such a strange place. Uh, it's hard to. It's hard to win if you're inexperienced. If you want a more academic look at it, there's a guy called Nat Silver, who, who's a, a, an American statistician who does a, a website called, oh, I think it's called um, 538. And he, he analyzes every election campaign in America. And he actually adds to his predictions whether the person's ever stood, f- stood before. Yeah. And said the difference between someone who's an experienced campaigner, who's actually won in the past, and someone who's new is so significant that he adds it to the his yeah. his um, predictions. Yeah. A- and of course, he's got hundreds of predictions to show that how accurate he is. Yeah. Experience in politics, I guess, like life, really does matter. And if you've never uh, run a campaign before and it's your first. You're going to make mistakes like he's made this week, and yeah. thinking that this is a this is an important matter when actually he should have just dismissed it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know he's capable of learning. I hope. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Richard, I thank you very much indeed for your for your insights and your time this morning. Yeah. That is a former ACT leader, former uh, Labor Party cabinet minister, uh, former whip, clearly for the Labor Party, and you know, not a man not unused to scandal himself. Richard Preble. There was a story when I was very very young journalist early on about him and Anne Hercus, I think, breaking into an Air Force plane on the Chatham Islands to have a drink. And that story caused some scandal at the time. They were both cabinet ministers. Um, and it did. That was a bit of a brouhaha. But basically, Labour on this one, they have snatched defeat from the jaws of victory because they're now involved in their own spat. I don't know if Sam Uffendall gave this guy, uh, Gaurav Sharma, a few lazy dollars just to cause problems in the Labour Party, but I think Richard Preble has actually summed up the real point here. I think Christopher Luxon's um, behaviour this week, his strategic calls on this issue have been amateur hour in the extreme. I think calling the inquiry, allowing the suspension of Uffendall was newbie... Uh, novice greenhorn um, from the rising of the sun to the evening mass. Um, and Luxon has shown yet again that he is more a woke corporate cringer than a political leader. Um, that he is someone who is so concerned about his corporate image that he is not leading his political party. And uh, I think the National Party have done Sam Uffendall, who may not meet, have been or be the most wonderful person in the world. I think they've done him a gross disservice this week. And Sam Uffendall is lucky that Gaurav Sharma and former Labour MP Darian Fenton are providing such an excellent diversion um, from the issues uh, surrounding him. I'd also like to say that I think in general terms the New Zealand news media have behaved appallingly this week. They have failed to give the stories round up and all context. They have failed to, I think, reflect what the public mood is and what public sensibility is around issues like that.